Josh Rosen was a former five-star recruit and ranked as the best quarterback in the 2015 class. He chose UCLA and won the starting job outright as a freshman. His career with the Bruins was incredible, breaking multiple school records while being named to the second team All-Pac-12 in 2017. In my strong opinion, he is one of the most pro-ready quarterback prospects I've scouted in the last five years. His ability to place the ball down the field gave his team the opportunity to make plays. Versus Memphis, the Tigers dropped eight into coverage. Rosen sees the slot receiver breaking between the zones, and he places the ball in a perfect tight window in order to complete the pass. Not only does he have the tangible gifts, but his leadership and potential should make him star in the NFL. His best fit as a rookie would be with a team that allows him to use his strengths as a rhythm-based passer. He is absolutely incredible in the three-step quick game, and he does a great job of scanning the field from the pocket. In my opinion, a team like the Cleveland Browns with Hugh Jackson would be a great fit for him as he enters the pros. The New York Giants would also be a good fit, as I'll explain later in this video, and even a team like the Washington Redskins, who realistically won't be able to draft him, would be an instant star in Jay Gruden's offense. As a prospect, Rosen has all the traits you look for in a franchise quarterback. His mechanics and ability in the pocket to make his transition to the NFL pretty easy. He has the arm talent with strength, accuracy, and touch to plays of football in rhythm all over the field. His weaknesses, in my opinion, mainly stem from his desire to aggressively force balls down the field. At times, he doesn't take what the defenses give him, and he'll make an occasional late throw over the middle of the field. Now, I did list character concerns as an issue, and he's one of those players who you, as a general manager, will need to interview extensively before you draft him to your team. I do say this as a complete outsider, as I've never spoken to him personally, but he definitely carries some risk. As a passer, what really impresses me about Josh Rosen is how effective he is at placing the ball. He can throw back shoulder, like in this play versus Memphis, he can throw front shoulder, right at the numbers, or really any place he needs the ball to go. He is especially effective at the short and medium passing game and, in my opinion, he will absolutely love having a good receiving tight end in the pros. In this throw later in the same game, he placed the ball perfectly over the shoulder of his receiver. Rosen takes the ball from under center, and he executes a quick fake to the running back. This route combination is called the spacing concept with a triangle read for the quarterback. His goal is to isolate one of the receivers and give his tight end a premier matchup in space. The Tigers cornerback takes outside leverage and allows the tight end to get behind him on his route. With the safety playing behind his throw, Rosen knows that he can place his ball with touch over the defender's shoulder. The throw drops perfectly into the receiver's lap and gets the Bruins out of a tough situation on first down. As a deep passer, Rosen can sometimes be hit or miss with his accuracy. Deep crosses or by the sideline on comeback routes, he's usually fine, but it's more in the art of leading a receiver down the field where he isn't the best. He's not terrible by any means, and he certainly had his fair share of well-placed throws, but it's just something he'll need to work on. Against USC in the fourth quarter, the Bruins sent their outside receiver on a post route down the field. Rosen knows that since the Trojans blitzed their free safety, that he has a chance to place his ball to his receiver in stride. Rosen sees that his wide receiver is essentially hip to hip, but he underthrows the ball. USC's cornerback breaks up the throw, but somehow it ricochets into the air where his wide receiver was still able to make this catch. While his short and medium accuracy from the pocket is excellent, his ability on the run is an area where he needs to improve. He'll throw a perfect pinpoint pass and then will literally ground a throw on the very next play. Versus Colorado in the first quarter, he did a fantastic job of feeling the pressure and escaping the pocket. It's fourth down with nine to go, so he has to complete the pass in order to keep this drive alive. Where he placed his throw gave his receiver absolutely no chance at making the catch and the Bruins turned the ball over on downs. Now, as a counterpoint, watch this throw in the first quarter of UCLA's game against Stanford. This is an unbelievable throw where he squares his shoulders and finds the only space where his wide receiver can make a play. This is an NFL quality throw, he just needs to do this more consistently. While watching his tape, I love how he connects rhythm to his passing game. His footwork is some of the most developed I've seen in college and he stands in the pocket confidently with active feet. He understands how to use hitch steps and he can come out of the three-step, five-step, or the play-action passing game with tight feet to scan the field. His base is a bit wide at times, but he has perfected various delivery techniques to quickly and accurately release the ball to his targets. He would be an excellent fit in a West Coast passing game, utilizing the short, horizontal stretch routes of a team like Jay Gruden or Kyle Shanahan in the pros. 
In this throw versus USC, he placed the ball perfectly with anticipation right after the receiver made his break. The safety was lurking over the top, but this pass gave him an excellent chance to hold on to it while taking a big hit. While these traits are something that makes him a first round prospect, what makes him an early first round pick is how he developed his body and eye manipulation in college. On three different occasions versus Texas A&M, he used a fake shoulder pump to move defenders out of his way. The Aggies are in cover one plug, playing man coverage on the receivers. Rosen has the matchup he wants with a tight end versus the safety with outside leverage. He takes his drop, then pumps right before the tight end breaks on his route. Not only does this move the underneath plug defender, but it gets the safety to bite hard on the fake. The ball placement is just outside the fingertips of number 25, and that's all it takes for Rosen to complete this pass. Now, if you aren't impressed by that, he did it again about three minutes later on the very next drive. The defender is Armani Watts, who some have as a day two prospect in the upcoming draft. Rosen pumps hard and opens the same exact window, baiting him a second time in order to complete this pass. This ability is something that separates him from the other quarterbacks in this draft, and this is why I'm so excited about his potential. While Rosen did make some spectacular throws and decisions, he has a nasty habit of forcing balls down the field to receivers who are covered. He'll miss cornerbacks, and he'll miss lurking safeties in space. This was one of those plays in UCLA's victory over Texas A&M where this pass should have been intercepted. I don't know how Rosen missed a cornerback, but it looked like he thought his wide receiver was wide open. Simply put, he was super lucky that it slipped through the defender's fingers and was caught by his own receiver for the score. Another example of this happened versus Colorado in the third quarter. The Bruins run a flood concept to the right side of the field. This is a half-field read, and Rosen has to know that the safety will carry the fade route down the sideline. Now, based on the cornerback's position, Rosen's placement of this pass to the inside would have allowed him to beat this coverage. However, this all assumes he's already moved the safety. That's the first step, and every single safety in the NFL would have been able to pick off this ball. Based on my film study, Rosen has shown the ability to move on to his checkdown. Unfortunately, he definitely falls into the trap of being too confident with his arm and throwing poorly thought out balls. In this play versus Memphis, he steps into the pocket and escapes to his right. There is a wide open receiver sprinting towards the sideline. This is the only place his pass should have gone, but for some reason, Rosen holds on to it looking for a bigger play. I get that it's third down, but if he threw it earlier, the receiver might have been able to turn up the field and convert this third and long situation. Instead, the pass is thrown across the field where it's intercepted for a touchdown. Really just an awful decision, and you have to hope he learns from this in the future. The final thing I want to discuss is Josh Rosen's awareness in the pocket. He's usually in sync with the flow of the line, but he'll sometimes miss an edge defender coming off the backside. Versus USC, he did a good job of stepping into the pocket and making his way to his crossing route. Sure, he's wide open, but many QBs would try to scramble instantly under pressure. Rosen isn't like that, and he dealt with a ton of pressure in college. As an athlete, he has the ability to scramble and damage defense with his legs, but he tends to only do that as a weapon of last resort. Now, when he does scramble, he tends to dive forward head first, so he'll need to learn to slide in order to protect himself in the pros. From a pro comparison standpoint, Rosen reminds me a lot of Eli Manning. Both these quarterbacks have the intangibles to make plays when necessary, and both these players had great arms with terrible offensive lines in their final season in college. Both players are also aggressive with the football and tend to not always find the check down by the sideline. In my opinion, both these players are rhythm-based passers, and they do well in a system that allows them to throw the ball with timing. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is Josh Rosen's character concerns. I said this earlier, but since I don't know him personally, I can only take what the media and his coaches say about him. Trent Dilfer, for example, called him arrogant and entitled as a freshman. Since then, Dilfer claims he's matured as a person, and while that does make me feel better, to have those concerns early doesn't exactly eliminate all fears. Now, some have already projected he'll be the next player to force a trade, and while I don't share that viewpoint, he'll be a very interesting story to watch. Well, that's all I have for you. Over the next several months, I'll be working on scouting reports on this channel. Go ahead and subscribe to my feed, or if you want to support my work or suggest a prospect, click on the link to my Patreon account. If you don't have the spare change to donate, please do me a favor and follow me on Twitter at SamuelRGold instead. Thanks again for watching, and look forward to my next video sometime next week.